Hello, and welcome to this session on Should I Postdoc or Not? I'm Sonali Shukla, one of the careers consultants here at Cambridge, and my colleague Lucy Romaine and I will be walking you through things to consider. In this session, we're referring to all post-PhD positions for early career researchers, including fellowships and postdocs employed in other research groups or departments. In this video, we're going to look at the next step on the academic career path to help you to decide if that's something you want to do. In this video, we'll cover what we mean by postdoctoral positions, how a postdoc fits in the academic career path and how to work out if it's right for you. By the end of this video, you'll be able to identify where a postdoc fits within the academic career and explore the pros and cons of moving into a postdoc position. You'll be able to recognise factors to consider when deciding whether a postdoc is right for you and find sources of support to aid your decision making. And at the end, you'll reflect on your own motivations to support you in making an informed decision about whether to postdoc or not. So what is a postdoc and how does it fit within the wider academic career path? Postdocs are predominantly fixed term research positions offering the opportunity for further academic training and development. If you're in a scientific discipline and sometimes in the social sciences, moving from a PhD to a postdoc, you'll likely still be working with another researcher on an established project which is driven by them. Most will spend some time as a postdoc before securing a fellowship to enable them to develop their own research ideas and independence, helping them to move into a lecturing role later. Others may move into lecturing without a fellowship first if they've been able to demonstrate growing independence and develop their own research ideas through their postdoc opportunities. In the arts, humanities and social sciences, it's more common to move into a fellowship or a combination of fellowship and short term teaching positions post PhD. And you may have a series of these before securing a lectureship. Compared to STEM, you may find you develop independence earlier on in your career as you secure fellowships to support your developing research programme. If you're someone whose ultimate goal is to establish and run your own independent programme of research, supervising your own students alongside responsibility for teaching, then a postdoc or fellowship is the next step towards achieving that goal. The key point is that a postdoc, fellowship and early career teaching posts last for a fixed period based on time limited funding, usually working with or being supported by an established department or research group. This will vary in different countries, so if you're looking to work outside of the UK, take a look at the video description below for resources to help you explore the academic career paths globally. You're all individuals with different experiences and priorities, so it's really important to think carefully about the factors that are important to you when making a decision about whether to move into a postdoc after your PhD. Pause the video here and note down your personal reasons why you might consider a postdoc or fellowship after your PhD. And then note down reasons to think carefully about choosing the postdoc opportunity. If you're passionate about your subject, committed to driving forward your research and keen to develop your own ideas and track records, a postdoctoral position or fellowship can be a good fit with these motivations, alongside enabling you to build teaching, technical or research project leadership experience and providing more opportunities to get involved with departments and the university academic community to support applications for permanent positions. Think carefully about a postdoc or fellowship if you're considering a non-research career. Will a postdoc position help you to make that move or is it something that you can do now? If uncertainty is a concern and you want to settle, the academic life may not be a good fit, but you might not avoid these issues if you want to move out of academia. So do your research and consider this carefully. We'll talk more about just falling into a postdoc 
postdoc shortly but if you're unsure what else to do with your career now is a good time to take some action to start working it out rather than going straight into a postdoc because the option is there you don't want to end up in the exact same position when that contract ends and we'll talk more about this later in the video it might be useful to now consider what Cambridge postdocs do after they leave Cambridge. This data is collected by the Career Service and does represent a relatively small sample, but is still illustrative. You can see here that if we're looking at STEM postdocs, 63% of them will continue on to an academic research position. Now, some of those will be another postdoc, and we estimate about 30% of postdocs that we work with go on to an established, permanent, or independent position immediately after their time at Cambridge. Many other postdocs go on to non-research or research outside of academia positions as well. Of our arts, humanities, and social sciences postdocs, just for comparison, you can see that 83% move into another academic position after their postdoc. It's worth noting that, like in STEM, there are arts, humanities, and social sciences postdocs who undertake a number of fellowships and short term teaching contracts without securing a permanent lectureship position. Our advice when working with researchers is to be proactive and make strategic, active choices about continuation of contracts or taking up new ones rather than becoming the default long term postdoc. Is another year in this position or a similar one going to add to your network, build your research output, help you develop your research direction and to become more independent? Ensure you take ownership of your career trajectory and think strategically about it from right at the beginning, and that can help you to decide what your next step should be. It's important to take time to think about what ideally a postdoc position would offer you. If you could write the job description yourself and pick the institution, the PI, your group, your project, your colleagues, what would it look like? Pause the video and take a moment to jot down a few of the characteristics of your ideal postdoc position. When you're considering doing a postdoc, you want to be wary of the unicorn. Like any job, you may need to still make some compromises. Are you prepared to do this and will it still be the right decision for you if you have to compromise? Could you get some of these things from other opportunities? Often when we look at the ideal postdoc position, we look at kind of three major categories, the research. So what is the reputation of the institution or the group that you'll be working with, as well as the individual PI or supervisor? Does the department or group as a whole have related projects? Because a postdoc is a fixed term position, are you working on a project that will have some preliminary results? And what is the cohort of postdocs like? Does the department or group have other postdocs or senior postdocs that can guide and mentor you? It's also important to consider your wider career development, particularly as a postdoc is a fixed term contract. Does your supervisor have good connections and collaborators? Are there opportunities to travel to conferences or participate in them virtually? Do you have an opportunity to do teaching? Can you advance your career by gaining extra responsibilities? Also look widely at the university for good postdoc support networks and personal and professional development programs. For example, here at Cambridge, there's a dedicated postdoc career service, the researcher development team, and the Postdoc Academy, all of which support postdocs in various ways. And most importantly, remember that the postdoc is a stepping stone to something else. Are you gaining independence? Will you have the ability to initiate collaborations independent of your supervisor? And will you be able to get the right balance between working independently on a project and getting support? It's also good to think about what your opportunities will be for gaining independent funding through a fellowship and whether that's a possibility. There's lots of support available to help you to work out whether a postdoc or fellowship is right for you. The next step may be to identify the questions you have and the information you need to help you work out if a postdoc or a longer term academic career is the right next step for you.
Once you have those questions and have identified the information you need, you can then identify who or what might help you to answer those questions, whether it's other postdocs, principal investigators or more senior and experienced academics, the career service or online resources to help focus your research. Here's an example on the screen and now is a really good time to use your network and reach out to people outside of your own department and perhaps at other institutions, including those who've moved out of academia, either at the PhD or the postdoc stage. Our resource, Alumni Career Connect, available through the Career Service website, can also help you to identify people that you can speak to. You may want to pause the video now and note down some of your key questions and think about who you might speak to for some guidance to help you find the answers. When considering whether a postdoc is the right next step for you, there's no right or wrong answer you might find it useful to answer the following questions. So take these away and reflect on the answers. If you're struggling with them, it might be a good time to book a careers appointment and we can help you to step back and dig a bit deeper into what you want. Thank you for listening to our Should I Postdoc or Not video. You'll find additional resources to support your career planning in the video description below. And you can also check out our full researchers playlist for additional resources to support your career planning. So the next step is to identify some actions to support you with your decision making. And if you feel stuck, come and see us in the career service and we'll be more than happy to support you with your next steps. Thank you for listening.